Websites like Ancestry and 23andMe have opened up the door for millions of us to trace our family's lineage. But for descendants of slaves in America, that family tree can be much harder to grow. A lack of records can leave major gaps in time and lineage. The quest to close those gaps is a focus of a new Nova documentary that follows filmmaker Byron Hurt and his extended family on their heritage journey to learn more about their great, great, great-grandparents, Lee and Liza Hurt. For years, our family has relied on our reunions to help build out our family tree. But so much of our older history is largely unknown. Before the family reunions began, our tree looked something like this. A handwritten document created by my great-great-uncle, B.B. Hurt, one of Lee and Liza's sons. So the film is called Lee and Liza's Family Tree, and Byron Hurt joins me now to share more along with his cousin, Renard Rogers. Thank you so much for being with me. Thank you for having us. So first, I want to ask you, Byron, talk to me about what that process was like in trying to collect all of these documents, because I know it's probably extremely difficult. Well, I have to say that my cousins, Renard and Jandra, and the Ancestry team, the Ancestry Committee um, that was created by our uh, first woman president, Anitra Hurt, did most of the work. Uh, they did the lion's share of the work, um, doing the research, looking through historical documents, and then eventually uh, the DNA came into play. I was there to document the journey and the process and to tell the story the best way that I could. And I'm really glad and, and grateful that NOVA gave me the opportunity to do that. So, Renard, tell me, I mean, where did you start? Because I imagine it probably seemed like a daunting task in the beginning. It was definitely a daunting task. And thanks for having us, Crystal. And again, we have been doing family reunions for 37 years. Our 38th year will come up in 2024. So we had a little bit of history, but it was really focused on the 14 kids of Lee and Liza. Every time we had a family reunion, we'd learn more about their kids, but we knew nothing about them. There are patriarch and matriarch of the family. And so what we started to do on our last reunion in, um, I don't remember which reunion we were at. Um, I think it was New Jersey, uh, the one that Byron hosted. Uh, we decided that we needed to go back further and learn more about Lee and Liza. And again, our, our last name is Hurt. So we didn't know anything about the Hurt side. That was really where the focus was initially. But we knew even less about Eliza, Eliza Waller. We'll call the Hurt Waller family reunion. So we wanted to find out more about her too. So that's what started the journey. We created a, an ancestry committee. And that ancestry committee is made up of eight of us, including myself and my cousin Jandra and several of uh, other family members that were interested in this. And that's what started the journey. You know, I'm from a big family myself, and I know that there are lots of family stories that some of them are myth and some of them are true. Did any of those family stories guide you to, you know, evidence-based, you know, uh, accounts that you were able to put together in this uh, documentary and in the, your family's history? You know, yeah, that's on, true. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, Byron. <laughs> Well, no, I was, I'm sorry, Renard. Um, so I wanted to say that, you know, for, for many years, there's been um, a myth that our um, patriarch owned land. Um, and this was mostly through um, oral history in our family. And we discovered through the process that Lee Hurt, in fact, did own land by the time that he died. Now, he eventually lost that land um, due to taxes, unpaid taxes, but he did, he wasn't a landowner. And this is someone who was a born into slavery in 1863 um, and did not know how to read or write for a good portion of his life and eventually owned his own land and had his family members living on that land for many years. Renard, what were you going to say? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say on that, besides that, on Lee, um, that was some of the, him owning land was a big uh, find for us. And we thought if we could find out how he got that land, that we could find out more about where he came from. And as you, you'll see in the film, if we were able to do that, but the bottom line is that that was one of the things that, and one of the, the hints that we used and when we did some of our research 
the other things that we that we heard that um, we knew he was mulatto. At least that was where, and that's a, a mixed race. Um, we wanted to f- confirm that throughout the the, the um, throughout our research. We found on the census reports that's what it said, but we were trying to go there. We've heard about him coming in on a mule or a horse or a bus or a train uh, to Eatonton, Georgia. And we wanted to find out more about that. How did he get here? And that's really what started this whole process relative to Lee. We knew nothing, nothing about how our hurt name came about or, or anything like that. Well, like so many African-American families in this country, I know that it can be difficult to ha- to tri- track down these documents, to really connect the dots here. You know, uh, we have a clip from the documentary talking about why it's so difficult to trace black lineage. I think at this point, we've exhausted a lot of the public records. Um, that, that's the challenge. So we have to turn to DNA. Given our history of ruptured families, it's not surprising that many black folks are turning to DNA to try to put the pieces of our families back together. Slavers captured and brought Africans from the west coast of Africa to these shores in America. Lee and Liza's ancestors were likely among them. And so talk to me a little bit, uh, Byron, in putting together, you know, the video and the pieces of this evidence to make it into, you know, this documentary. Was there anything that surprised you in terms of the discovery that, you know, your family committee uh, was able to to come up with? Well, it was very challenging to put all of the information together, the historical documents, um, the family photographs, which we make great use of. Um, as well as all of the information that we were learning from the DNA um, research and that process. It was very, very challenging to uh, basically string all of that together to tell a really cohesive story in one hour. Um, I think the the only surprise is that we couldn't go back further than w- where we ended up. Um, we, we're still digging. We're still going to, you know, continue the process of learning. Um, but it's the challenge of going back prior to the Civil War, um, and, and much earlier than that, that was probably the greatest challenge because it's just really, it's a complicated process. It's hard to stitch together all of the information because there are so many different moving parts. Um, in learning about our, um, uh, about, about Liza, was really, it was really challenging learning about her as well because we learned that it's really difficult to track down information about black women at a certain, at a certain period of time um, because their names change, they move. Um, you know, there are a lot of different factors. They were enslaved, right? So they didn't, they didn't have really uh, well-maintained records and that sort of thing. So it, that, that was probably the biggest challenge, going back and learning all of the information that we hope to learn. Renard, did you find that you would just hit this wall of information or this wall where you're like, why can't I find anything beyond this? We hit many, many walls. Mm. We brought in as much as we could. DNA evidence helped us track down some of Lee, who we thought were Lee, Lee Hurt's relative. That was a wall that we we thought we had gotten far. And we found out that it wasn't the the entrance that we thought it was going to lead us to. We heard we hit walls like that throughout. We learned a lot about. Um, I learned personally a lot about that. Uh, I thought that many of the slaves took their slave owners' names. I found out that that's not that was only true like half the time. Mm. I found out why so many relatives were related to each other. I thought that was kind of I used to kid my cousins that that was a southern thing that cousins marry cousins. That that's not the case. That was the reality of slaves coming out of slavery and and getting to know each other and mixing after they got. So that, that was really very interesting. It was very enlightening, the whole journey. But we did wind up hitting a lot of walls that we had to get around. Byron, what do you hope folks take away from your family's story, but most importantly, this journey you take folks on in this documentary? Well, I know a lot of families are into ancestry research and wanting to learn more about their families. And it's Thanksgiving, we're entering the holidays, and I know a lot of people are going to be gathering with their family members. I hope that they watch the documentary and they start having conversations about their ancestry, where they come from, whether it's oral history that they begin passing on if they haven't done that already, 
or beginning a more uh, formal search like what our family has done um, and and really you know taking on the challenge of learning more about their families. Um, I hope they're inspired by our family. We have a really organized, really well-structured family. I hope that people, uh, family members are inspired and motivated um, to, to reunite with their families and to um, you know just begin new traditions around their families and family reunions. Renard, I mean, I can only imagine what your holidays look like, right? Very organized. There's not a detail uh, left uncared uh, for. What do you hope it, what do you, messages would you have for other families, especially in this holiday season, to build off of what Byron said? Yeah, I think building off of what he said, particularly for black families, there's so much history here in the United States and America, but there's even more history beyond that, if you go beyond Africa. And, and I was hoping, I'm hoping that like us, and probably 10 years ago, I wish we would have started this 10, 20 years ago, but now we have different tools. We have um, uh, online tools, we have DNA. I hope more tools come about because more people are interested in finding out about their family and particularly black families going beyond their slave owners, but even beyond that, where they could find out where they actually originate from in Africa. All right. Well, Renard Rogers and Byron Hurd, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. Thanks for inviting us.